Roll up, roll up. We are talking about Rollo. <laughs> We're not talking about Rollo. We're talking about Play-Doh today because this is such a fantastic resource for helping speech and language development. I always have a few tubs of Play-Doh in my therapy bag for home visits and clinic sessions because there's so many things that we can do with it. And I am all about being flexible and child-led to support language development. So today I'm gonna share with you five ways that I use Play-Doh as a really useful and flexible and fun resource for supporting language development. So that you, by the end of this video, will have some ideas that you can apply to play with your child, whether they're very little, and even for our older ones who are talking more. So stay tuned and let's get started. Number one very popular starting point for adding more language into Play-Doh play is thinking a lot about action words. Lots of the children that I meet are just starting to put two words together and so when we add in more action words to their vocabulary then this really gives them more to play with to start putting two words together. So within Play-Doh we have words like roll, squish, stretch, splat, chop, etc. Whatever you can do with Play-Doh, think about what that action word is and repeat it lots of times for your little one. Remember, if we're thinking about action words and helping your child learn those, we're not asking them to use the action word, we're thinking about how we can model that action word for them. Give, don't quiz. Second suggestion is using Play-Doh to practice instructions. Children typically understand more language than they use and so it's really useful to start with giving them some simple instructions that they can practice understanding and following themselves. And to really support really successful understanding early on, I might talk through the instruction at the same time that I'm demonstrating it, so that I'm giving them that really big visual clue with the language before asking them to just do it without any of those extra clues myself. Can you make a little blue ball and a red ball? So they're having to remember a few different parts of instructions. Later, for my more verbal children, I might ask them to explain to me how I could do something. So I might want to say, I'd like to make a whole bowl of peas. Can you help me? What should I do? How can I make that? I can think recently of a child who helped explain to me how I could make a sandwich out of Play-Doh. And there was loads of vocabulary within that. And she was able to give me one instruction at a time and see me following her instructions. Because it was really visual, it gave her the feedback that if she didn't quite give me enough information or didn't quite use the language, language, then that was hard for me and we were able to figure it out together and do some really useful linguistic problem solving. Third suggestion, asking for help. This is something that lots of the children that I meet need some extra help with. It's not their automatic response to say, help, and instead they'll often just try and figure it out for themselves. And so it's really useful for us to practice this by giving them something that they need a little bit of extra help with. And the lids on Play-Doh pots are often quite difficult to open. And so this is a really great one to just wait for a minute and see if the child's struggling, and if they are, then offer them some help. If your child has mastered the art of opening a tub of Play-Doh, fear not, you can still practice asking for help, because what I notice if, is if I'm modeling something to do with the Play-Doh, either rolling out a skinny worm, or making a cube, or something that is a little bit hard for them, then a child is often keen to copy and have a go at making what I'm making. And if I wait and give them long enough to have a go themselves, think about how it's tricky and how they might need my help, then often they'll look towards me and again I can say, oh, do you like some help? I also use Play-Doh for counters. Counters are really useful if we're keeping track of how many times we're practicing a certain sound or a certain word. They're also really useful if we are counting out the number of syllables in a word, if we're thinking about early sound awareness skills. And so we can make up a whole bunch of tiny little balls and then use them as counters within our sessions. Finally, Play-Doh is a really great way to build on a child's shared imagination. And for my children who struggle with their social communication skills, understanding that we can create this kind of shared imaginative picture through our interaction and our conversation together is a really key part of their social cognitive development. And so if they start making something with their Play-Doh, I will ask them to tell me about what they're imagining. What is this amazing thing that you're making? And then, so that we can make it a shared imagination, I might add in some suggestions. Oh, that is such a cool dragon. I wonder if he has 
purple wings. Oh, I wonder if he blows bubbles out of his nose. And then we can start negotiating and practice how we are creating this shared picture together. This is a really key part of how children play together in the playground, is they're talking about what they imagine and they're sharing and negotiating it with the other children that they're playing with. And so practicing this within a more structured one-to-one -one situation with a supportive adult is a really key step in that direction. So there you have it, a few suggestions for using Play-Doh to build vocabulary, listening skills, following instructions, building social communication skills, and also practicing tricky sounds. How do you play with Play-Doh with your little one? I'd love to know. And if the two of you are sitting down together and having fun, whether it's Play-Doh or something else, then you're on your way to raising a confident communicator. It's so awesome. Every tiny step the two of you take together is a step in the right direction. And thank you so much for sharing a little bit of it with me today. And if you want to make sure to stay in touch, then do sign up for the monthly Dash of Salt newsletter over at saltbythesea.com. And stay tuned because in future weeks, I'm going to be sharing some more of my favorite flexible toys for supporting speech and language development. So if you liked this one and you're looking forward to some more, do give it a thumbs up and maybe share this video with another mum or dad that you know who is also supporting their child's early communication skills so that we can all share this together and support each other on our way. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time.